Welcome to The Good Life, and we're going to have a great time today. We're in the, uh, the In Him Devotions, which, is, uh, which are our new episodes. Very exciting stuff. I have a great, uh, a great Bible lesson to share with you today. It's going to impact your life. This is more than just a simple teaching. It's a profound, which means deep truth. You're going, to be, you're going to be blessed. Father, I thank you for blessing everyone who's watching, listening, and I pray that everyone has an uninterrupted opportunity to hear this message from your word, which will impact our lives forever. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty, let's jump right into it. I want to start with uh, Romans chapter 4, and I'm going to read two verses, 24 and 25. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him, there's your prepositional phrase, your prepositional in him phrase, uh, believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Who, Jesus, who was raised from the dead, was wounded for our transgressions, oh, beg your pardon, <laughs> uh, who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for a justification. Let me say that again. I can say it better the second time. Uh, God raised up Jesus from the dead, and Jesus was delivered to the cross, to Calvary, for our offenses, and he was raised again for our justification. <clears throat> this is much better than being forgiven. Thank God we're forgiven. <laughs> and uh, forgiveness is a process that goes on as long as we're going to be on this earth. We're going to be requiring uh, forgiveness. You know, the person who says he hasn't sinned is a liar, and that makes him a sinner. And and thank God for First uh, John uh, nine, right? Uh, if we sin, we haven't. We're and confess our sins. Jesus will forgive us, and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us of unrighteousness. So, we've got an advocate, Jesus, who pleads our cases for us. We have a high priest <laughs> uh, of our confession, who's. Uh, go between the, uh, the, our intercessor between heaven and earth. And so um, if we need forgiveness, we have it. But this is much more than forgiveness. This is the word justification, which means acquittal. It's a legal term. You know, you can, uh, you can be brought up before charges. I hope you're never, that never happens. But let's say someone could be brought up uh, to court before the charges, and uh, the court says, well, you're guilty, but uh, the court is going to have mercy on you, and uh, we're going to forgive you and let you go this time. That happened to a friend of mine. Uh, I prayed for him and caused him to get saved. <laughs> it's a great testimony. I'll tell it one day. But uh, I'll tell you what's better is when the, uh, when the judge says, you know what, uh, there's no evidence here to con convict you. You are acquitted. We drop the charges. You're let go. You're free. You haven't been forgiven of anything. You've been declared uh, justified. You see the difference between that? To be guilty of something and then to be forgiven is great, but to be declared not guilty, to be acquitted, that's even better. No, no records, uh, totally expunged, totally declared uh, uh, innocent and free. And that's what happened to you and me. Jesus did not just forgive us our sins. He did forgive us our sins. Don't get me wrong. But he did more than that. He also acquitted us of our sins. Praise God. That ought to make you happy that you have been acquitted. It's as if you've never sinned. The uh, Sunday school teacher taught his children... Uh, how to understand that word by using the word justified, just as if I'd never sinned, just as if I'd never sinned. Still works for me, and I'm an adult. Praise God. All charges dropped. Let me read it to you in the Amplified Bible. He was raised from the dead because of our justification, or our acquittal, absolving us of all sin before God. Now, there are two ways to read this scripture, and... Um, it's uh, most people read it this way. Most people read 
because he was raised up from the dead, now we can be justified. But actually, it's just the opposite. He was raised from the dead because we were justified. We weren't justified because he was raised. He couldn't have been raised until we were justified. He couldn't have come out of the grave until every single one of us had been acquitted of his sins. Let me read you some more scripture and you'll get it. Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of chastisement of our peace was upon him. And uh, verse 6, the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. All whom? All Christians? No, sinners, everybody in the world, everybody who's ever lived or is alive or should one day, will one day live. Jesus paid for their their sins. How did he do that? How did he pay for the sins of of people that were already dead. (laughs) Well, because he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Lamb crucified before the foundation of the earth. And at the end of time, he presented his blood to the Father. So here you have these bookends, one on the Alpha side, one on the Omega side. He was crucified before the foundation of the earth. The only way you can understand this is to get a revelation because we're talking about Jesus being beyond time the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, He which was and is and always shall be. So every bit of time, every moment of time is within the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Before the world began, Jesus was already virtually crucified. And He presented His blood virtually at the end of time. Praise God. So from before time to after the end of time, he had suffered for every human being. He's suffered for sins you haven't committed yet. But because he's the Omega, he knows you did it, and he took care of those when he was suffering on the cross. Remember, uh, time is different with God than it is with us. Some people think that heaven is a long time. You know, when we've been there 10,000 years, no, 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 it's no time. It's the absence of time. It's perpetuity. And so Jesus, who is Alpha and Omega, dwells in this perpetual place with God. And it's not not, uh, an impossibility for him to exist in your past, your present, and your future at the same time. In fact, he does exist in your past, your present, and your future at the same time. Jesus died for you before you were ever born. He died for you and paid for your sins before you ever came into this world. Praise God. And he did that for every human being. Let me glance up here at my time. He did that for every human being. Now, right now, there's 7.9 billion human beings on the earth. Uh, That's a lot of people. And he had to go through all the details of their lives. Now, we know that Jesus was dead three and a half days, but he was in that place where there's no time, and he suffered for all of humanity. So you can't put uh, a measurement of time upon his, uh, his sojourn in hell. You can't put a measurement of time when he was in hell. He was in hell sufficiently to go through all the details of all the lifespans of every human being who ever lived, is living, or will one day live. Past, present, and future generations. Past, present, and future sins. I hope you're getting this. You you need to have a, a revelation of the Holy Spirit to get it. So we don't know how many people have lived upon the earth. I read a number one time, and I, I doubt it. I imagine it's more. But I read a number that 22 billion people have lived on the earth since... Uh, human beings uh, started uh, walking on the earth. You know, let's say from the Garden of Eden. I don't know. I don't know. That that sounds like a very small number to me, but uh, let's say it's, uh, let's say it's 20 billion, uh, be be moderate. And let's say that uh, 20 billion people up till today, and we don't know how many more billions will be on the earth in the generations to come. A lot of people don't think they think we're the last generation. Well, they've been saying that for two thousand years. So, what if the what if the world exists another two thousand years? That number may double or double again or double again. We know that when the population gets to be a certain point, 
it uh, you know it becomes a bell curve. It become you know, the population increases uh, dramatically, exponentially, and that could happen if uh, Jesus doesn't take us out of here, or if we don't uh, wreck the planet some way. So, getting back to my point, before I run out of time here, there's a whole lot of people that Jesus had to suffer for, not just you, but if you think about all the all the wrong that you did in your short lifetime. You see, we make uh, over 20,000 decisions a day. <laughs> and every time we make a, a bad decision, that's a mistake. And a sin is a mistake. It's missing the mark. And uh, we, have, uh, we have wrong thoughts. We have wrong deeds. And we have sins of omission and sins of commission, things that we did that we shouldn't have done and things that we should have done that we didn't do. And, and we don't even know how many times we sin. You know, it, it's just, uh, <laughs> you know, if it were a clock, it'd be spinning like the propeller on, a, on an airplane because uh, every human being has the ability to sin a lot. And Jesus had to pay for all those sins before he could come out of the grave. Remember what Jesus taught? He said, if you're cast into prison, you will in no wise come out unless you pay the utmost farthing. That's, a, that's the smallest monetary unit that they had in those days. It was three-eighths of a penny. Three-eighths of a penny. I know people who, who throw pennies away. Um, I don't know why they'd want to do that, but uh, there are people who think, well, it has no value. Well, imagine three-eighths of a penny. You, you take a, a penny and you cut it in half and you cut it those two in halves, you got quarters, and then you cut those in half and you have eights and you throw five of those away and you keep three little tiny, tiny pieces. That's a farthing. That's the smallest monetary unit in those days, probably to this day, as far as coinage goes. And Jesus said, if someone is cast into prison, they're not coming out of prison until they pay the last farthing, the last debt for the last infraction, for the last sin. So Jesus went through all the details of your life, all the details of your life with a fine tooth comb. And, and he had to suffer in your place for every one of these. If he had not suffered in your place, then you would have to be punished for that. But Jesus was punished so that you wouldn't have to be punished. Praise God. God, God saw the sufferings of his soul and was satisfied. He said, it's enough. He has paid more than the equivalent of every sin in the lifetime of you, of me, of everyone else. So it wasn't that Jesus hung on the cross a couple of hours and it hurt a lot. And, oh, my God. No, no, no. He had to live the life vicariously of every human being, for the murderers, for the rapists, for the drug dealers, for the extortionists, for the dictators, for the despots, for the villains, for the crooks, for the demonized, for the Satanists, for the sorcerers. He had to go through all of that, all of those horrible thoughts, all of the sins of the perverts and and uh, sexual abusers and abusers of themselves with mankind. He had to go through all of the evil of every evil person. He had to suffer for every human being who ever lived. Now let's take that number 20 billion people and let's multiply it by the average lifespan of, say, 70 years, and let's put a number of uh, 365 days times 70 years times 20 billion times 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes in a second, and you'll come up with a number that's impossible to comprehend. And those are all the sins that Jesus had to suffer for, and he did it in real parallel. Uh, how would I, how would I say this? Uh, uh, I don't want to use the word time, it corresponded exactly to what the people did. Yeah, yeah. If it were years, then he was in hell for trillions of years. If it were measured in years, not just billions of years, trillions, maybe quadrillions. I haven't run the numbers on that. It wouldn't make much sense to us anyway. There's my timer. But here's the point today. 
he was raised because we were justified. In other words, once the scales of justice had been balanced and God saw the suffering of Jesus' soul and said it's equivalent of more than all the sin that humanity has ever committed, and at that point we were acquitted, and then and only then could Jesus be raised from the dead. He could not be raised from the dead before your acquittal, before my acquittal. He had to wait until after we had satisfied the demands of justice. And then, once we were justified, up from the grave he arose. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm over my time, but I've got to say this. So give me a, another, a, another minute here. If there was one little detail of your life, one little seemingly insignificant sin, you know, we tend to think of big sins and little sins and and uh, venal sins, and and uh, uh, I don't know all the sins, <laughs> uh, but we tend to think in good, better, I mean, bad, worse, and much worse. Uh, no, even if, even if, let's say that you had a bad day, and you um, you got mad and 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 threw a plate against the wall and broke it, a cheap plate. An old cracked plate wasn't worth anything, but you know, a little fit of anger, you got mad, threw it against the wall, bam. And you know what? You forgot about it because it's no big deal. And uh, you could probably pass a lie detector test. You know, people interrogate you. Did you break a plate? What? No, I didn't break a plate. You know why? You forgot about it. You did break a plate, but you forgot about it. But when Jesus went to hell, he had to pay for that plate you broke. <laughs> and if he had overlooked it because it's insignificant, then he would have never come out of the grave. If there was one tea tiny, small, seemingly insignificant sin that he did not pay for, then he could not have come out of the grave. Did he come out of the grave? Yes, he did. Was he resurrected? Yes, he did. What does that mean? It's proof that he paid for every sin in your life, my life, and the life of all humanity. He could not come out until the last farthing. Three-eighths of a cent was paid. Praise God, this is good stuff. I hope you're getting it. Go back and listen to it again. It will hit you uh, and, and set you on fire. If this doesn't set you on fire, Fire, you got wet wood. You need, you need to listen to it again. He was raised for our justification. Because we were justified, he was allowed to come back. Woohoo! Okay, uh, visit me at Z Church. Uh, Information is going across the bottom of the screen there, zchurch.life, Saturday mornings, 10 o'clock a.m. Um, pray about being a partner with us, and always keep, keep it simple, sweetheart. The most Beautiful things can be so simple.